Oh boy. This is when it all starts over again right here. Yeah. Tackle. There's one. I got a big one here. Oh my gosh, that's heavy. We're more organized this year. That that is the the goal for this year. We have the money bags, which are absolutely awesome. Super thick. We have this is extra stuff. This is this is the stuff we need. Oh my gosh! All right, dude, you're gonna have to jump up in there and uh, finish that off. All right, so we are getting ready to hit the road. We're actually gonna leave today, and this is my brand new boat, guys. My 2022. FXR21. Uh, I've got it wrapped, got the carpet logos down finally. I've fished out of it just a little bit and it's actually caught a few fish, a couple big ones actually. And uh, I'm excited about this year, you know. Um, I'm always nervous, you know, I get those butterflies to be honest with you because it's like, it's the unknown, you know. I, I, I'm standing here in shorts right now and it's beautiful weather here in Florida and we've got a giant cold front coming again so it's going to be down in the 30s and stuff for practice and it's gonna completely change the bite from what it is right now. So that, yeah, you know, stressful, you know, you gotta figure out, like you gotta game plan everything or where do you go? The, the, the St. John's River is obviously a, a large system, you know, you, you can fish all over the place in different lakes. So got a lot of like thinking to do, gotta make the right decisions. Um, so, I'm, I, but I am excited. So I wanna jump up in the boat here and show you all the different things about my boat and how I have it rigged out this year. Um, you know, I rigged it out basically the same uh, as I did last year, but I'm, I'm, I was really happy with it. You know, here's the deal. Everybody knows I ran Ranger forever. And Ranger's a great boat. I got in this boat here and everybody kept saying, oh, it rides really good. It's a soft riding boat. It's fast. It's, you know, it's, it fishes well. Yeah, of course, you know, you just don't know until you get in. And, and when I got in the Skeeter for the first time last year and started running them, it was. It's the softest ride. Like, I don't know what they've done to this hole, but it just doesn't slap the water. Like, you go through waves, it just does not pound. It's it's a very comfortable boat. It fishes well. The front deck has got tons of space. I'm farther forward, which this might sound silly, but I'm farther forward on the front of the boat than I was on my other boat. And that allows me to kind of sidearm cast and do a few things uh, on the front deck. They've got padded front deck all the way back here, which is good. So it's a very comfortable boat. It looks good. I mean, it's, the Skeeters are sweet. And um, I know they're popular. I see everybody's got a Skeeter right now. Everybody's running Skeeter. So they're they're killing the game right now. Um, really cool. But I'll show you inside. I did do one new thing that I can't wait to show you inside that I bought the other day online. I actually saw it online. I thought, okay, I'm going to try this. Good idea. So that's in, that's in here. But everybody that has dual mounts, uh, you have to make a decision on what you're going to do. Because you can't put two mount two two graphs in this hole right here so you either got to do a ram mount you've got to do another type of you know dual mount system and there's a lot of them out there boat logics in knoxville right there in tennessee they're great people number one number two they've really in my opinion they make the strongest mount like this mount is rock like like rock solid like this is fully adjustable but yet it doesn't move like it is there and why is that important? Because as you bounce down the lake, jumping waves or water shooting over the front of the boat sometimes when you porpoise one, uh, this takes a beating. And you don't, you don't want this to give. If this gives, you got problems. And I've heard stories of guys that have mounts on the front of their boats where screws have busted off, uh, brackets have broke, things come undone, it starts flopping around like it's a mess. And uh, that's not gonna happen with these. The, the way that they've, they've built these, the way that this, a boat logic mounts attaches to your boat. So they, I have it here on the front with my dual Garmin's. Um, of course, got my, my pan optics here on the front. Real quick before we jump to the back, I'll show you, I've got the pan optics here. This year, I'm trying it here on the motor. Um, let me know if, if, if you guys have experimented with, with putting pan optics on the shaft or on the motor, did you find that it was better, better signal, better return? Let me know what you think. We're gonna try it here this year. Um, two reasons. One is I, th I think I'll be in the water a little bit more, you know, for the water, you know, if I'm in waves, it's not gonna be shooting out. But number two, and I, and I learned this this fall, it's a pretty cool uh, little thing. I can take this off just by doing this one screw. One screw right there, take it off. Poop. This whole thing will come off. 
Uh, I'll have to cut this tape, of course, but I could take this whole thing off and lay it right here if I wanted to. And why would I ever want to do that? Well, if I'm in super thick matted hydrilla, you know, like we may be at one of the lakes here soon that's just super choked out. I don't need a live scope on the front of my boat and super thick hydrilla. As a matter of fact, it grabs on, the, on this and everything. So that is one of the downfalls of having any type of things attached to your trolling motor uh, is the grass gets stuck to it. But I can take it off with one screw and lay it here. And then if I go back offshore, I can, I'll probably just do zip ties right here instead of doing this tape, the guy that installed this. It looks good, but the zip ties are simple. Just do three or four zip ties and then I can reattach it. So anyways, that's my little tip on panoptics here. But that's what I'm gonna do there on that, so that's good. And then uh, let me show you the thing back here in the back. All right, same dual mount system here. Um, Boat Logics, obviously. You know, it's uh, rock solid, guys. I mean, uh, you know, enough said about that. These are the 12-inch units again. So I've got four 12s on this boat right now. And uh, and that's that. Let me show you up inside the boat. All right, so the other day I was online and uh, it was actually on Brandon Polnick's Instagram page popped up. And he had this deal, it was uh, made by Amp Marine, and it was this like organizational thing that you put in your rod locker and, you know, kind of helps you keep everything organized. I'm like, oh my God, it's actually pretty sweet. So I ordered one, Brandon Polnick. Social media does work. Check it out. Yeah, so this is what I ordered here from Amp Marine, and it comes, I, I forget exactly what they called it, but basically it's the Skeeter kit. FXR, they make them for every boat, by the way. So if you have a Ranger, a Nitro, a, a Bullet, a bat, I mean, whatever, they make different configurations for every boat. But in my Skeeter before, there was, there's nothing here on the sides. This was just fiberglass and fiberglass. So this was, in my opinion, uh, an opportunity for some storage. They also have the center uh, compartment here with little dividers, but Ant Marine makes these trays and this center tray it's all like a, a lightweight composite material, so super durable but lightweight. And I basically took out my center dividers here that it came with the boat, put my side organizers in on the side, and, and so my, my thinking is this. Everything I need for the tournament is gonna be right here, soft plastic wise, right? If I'm catching them on, you know, bandito bug or, or whatever, I'll have all that, my, my tournament stuff will be in here. And then all my extra will be back in the back in my money bags. And then, of course, I'll keep my boxes here. The other thing that I did is I took the dividers that were here and I moved them. I moved them right here, okay? So I put the dividers in here, which allows me to keep more tackle boxes here in the front. The bags of soft plastics, like all the Guggenbait stuff and different things that I carry, that weighs a lot. I mean, that that's a lot of weight. These boxes aren't that heavy. I mean, it's a box of crankbaits, it's a box of jerk baits, it's swim jigs, etc. So I have all that in there and have my line in that Bass Mafia bag. So this is how I have everything set up basically. This is it, all my rods over here, of course in rod sleeves, which is something I struggle with sometimes. I always find myself just stuffing them in there and they get all wrapped up on everything. But yeah, front of the boat this year, I, I'm, I'm excited about it because I'm, I'm a lot more organized. So I'm, I'm digging I'm digging what I've got going on right here. So Ant Marine, we'll just drop a link. They're not, it's not a, they're not a sponsor of mine. I've literally just bought the stuff I've told several people about Ant Marine recently and they've ordered them. Uh, honestly, if you have a boat and you wanna be better organized, you need to get on their website and check it out. So um, good stuff right there. That's it on the front. I guess I could take my net out. Somebody asked me last year, why do you keep your net in the boat? You know why? Because I can't net fish in the, in the elites, but you can net, or can't net bass, you can net a mudfish. You can net anything other than a bass. So if I had a big mudfish that had maybe a jerk bait or a, one of my expensive chatter baits on it, I wanted to get my hands, get my bait back. You know, I would use that net to net the fish up. Also, I got hung up a few times with crankbaits like at uh, Fort Loudon with a down like in rocks, down like six feet down, and I took the net and I'd stick the net down and let the, the netting kind of wrap up in the hooks and I'd rip it out. So I got I saved a few baits last year with that net. So that's why I keep the net in the boat, actually. I, I'd say another thing I like in this boat right here, a garbage can. I like a garbage can. Got my little, my little side box right here, which is nice. That's my little day box. I hadn't really quite figured out what to put in there. I keep sunscreen and towels and rags and stuff like that in there. But um, let me show you the back. All right, everybody's been wondering. They ask me all the time, why do you carry a cooler? It's got a cooler. Yes, the Skeeter has a cooler in the boat right here. The Skeeter's got a cooler right there, okay? And that's that's a good day cooler, right? This cooler right here, 
Check this out, it's a 25 angle. Perfect, right there in the middle. The reason, the reason I carry the 25 angle is because A, I can put extra ice in the boat and there's times that you need that, right? You keep that water cool in your live wells. So yeah, the angle 25 is perfect. It fits perfectly right there and um, keeps all my sandwich meat and everything all, I don't have to constantly have to keep, keep getting ice. So uh, that's the whole reason I keep that in the boat. Works really well and, uh, and that's that. Back here in the back. Check this out, guys. Okay, this is how I have the back set up. So I have my my 215 amp hour lithium pro lithium battery by lithium pros. Um, the biggest 12 volt battery on the market, 215 amp hours. So you can run everything and some on that, which is important. Um, I have my little toolbox here. Bought that at Walmart. Just a little. Toolbox box fits perfect right there. I keep my extension cord, which I don't run down the lake, my extension cord there, but when we travel with it, I keep it right there. So you get lots of room back there in the back. And then if you come over on this side, 236 volts right there. And uh, lithium pros, of course. But a lot of space, like I have space to put stuff there. Little tray. And this is another one of those deals from Amarine. Check this out. Little tray. I don't know what I'm gonna put in that thing yet, but it goes, Right there. So you could put, I don't know what in there, but that's basically what we've got going on there. Look at that beauty right there. That's the brand new SHO VMAX. Uh, redesigned cowling, some redesign underneath the cowling as well. They put a bigger alternator in there, which allows you to have 40% more amps going back to your cranking battery, thus going back to your electronics, keeping everything charged up. So. Uh, this motor is 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 good. It's I think it's even a little more powerful. They don't say that in the in this data, but I'm just telling you the thing's pretty peppy. Um, awesome motor. I can't say enough about Yamaha guys. And here's one of the things that I love about it. So here at Okeechobee, of course, we have a lot of grass. We have a lot of grass here in Florida. This thing goes through submerged vegetation better than any motor I've ever had. Like it does not overheat. I can go through miles of hydrilla, like topped out hydrilla. It just goes right through it. Other motors, and you know what I'm talking about guys, you get around some submerged vegetation and the thing's overheating in five minutes. So a lot of guys here in this lake are switching over to Yamaha so they can run wherever they need to run. They're not overheating. So, so um, that motor right there is bad to the bone. We've got it sitting on the 14 inch, 14 inch I said. Bob's job. I didn't even know they made a 14 until I called him. Steven at Bob's is like, oh yeah, we'll make a 14. 14 inch setback, six inches of travel, and they powder coated this color to match the Yamaha. So it's all matches perfect. And you can get any color you want. So if you had a different color motor or you wanted something customized, obviously they'll paint it whatever color they want. This is the action jack, which has the pump inside the plate, which is nice. I've been running Bob's forever, like literally forever and uh, no issues at all. So it's been real, real good. Right here, blades, 10 footers. I ran eights for a long time, but I like the tens because we do do a lot of sight fishing in those canals and it seems like with, it seems like when you have the eight, it's like uh, you, you find a fish on a bed, you back off and you're like, you look at your graph and it's like 8.1 feet deep and you're like, dang it. So 10 footers obviously get the job done on that, the canals so I can power pull down a lot more often on uh, on those sight fish that yeah that that's pretty much the boat guys i mean this thing is is really i'm excited about what what we've got this year um the rod coffin on top we keep all the rods in lear locker you know whole thing pretty much everything's ready to go i i, I can't think of anything that i might have forgot but i may have forgot somebody but um thank you for hanging out with me uh, on this video thank you for letting me show you the boat and uh Super excited about what 22 has in store for us. So we're heading off to the first tournament here, like literally right now. And we will see you guys real soon with the very first travel vlog of the year. It's coming right after this video, guys. We'll see you.